Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, I've got in the back here a comment. I'd like to make a comment on the comment. <laughs> it says, I have a theory. Gas prices are in the process of being engineered to rocket up at some point for one specific reason, to play into the narrative that fossil fuels are evil, expensive, obsolete, and then financially, it will make sense to throw trillions at green energy. So when oil is two to five hundred dollars a barrel, will it stay at two or five hundred dollars a barrel? Well, I don't know if it's going to stay there. Um, it probably won't. Uh, that is a very expensive uh, price, and it would probably be at a high ratio. But it all depends on how much inflation we have, how many, how many, how much money is in the system. Uh, two hundred dollars or five hundred dollars might be fifty cents today in the future. It all depends on what the value of the dollar is and. And that's really what it hinges off of. Now, I don't think that you can financially, I, I mean, if you really dig into it and you, were to, and you were to objectively, if you were to objectively look at all of these different things, um, energy sources, oil, coal, natural gas, uranium, uh, and then the renewables. The renewables, they have a cool name, renewable. They're actually replaceables. They are taking minerals out of the ground, using them, and then we have to discard them and, and, and trash it. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to create copious amounts of trash and put it all over the world that we then have to replace every 20 years. So we're going to have to have some sort of massive recycling program with all these toxic solar panels. And things that we can't reuse, like the fiberglass, I think they're made out of fiberglass, wind turbine blades, those big blades. Uh, right now, they chop them up and throw them into the environment. Uh, and they, they just bury them in the ground. Sounds like a great renewable plan. Uh, a lot of the processing of these magnets of rare earth metals uh, are, are very toxic. That's why China has like 95, 90 plus percent processing of, of the rare earth metals is all in China because they don't have the, the strict uh, environmental um, restrictions on them. They don't have all this in, these environmentalists. And, and I'm not saying that's necessarily good or bad, but what I am saying is it's a really dirty process to be processing rare earth metals. And then we have to, pro we have to gather all these metals in all these countries that are probably not very stable and are probably going to nationalize all their stuff anyway. So I don't know how successful the renewable camp's going to be to put up all these solar panels and wind turbines and all, and all this stuff. I, I, I don't know if it's going to be possible. Uh, we built an entire advanced society based off of high energy density fuels of coal, natural gas, oil, and uranium. I don't know if that's possible going backwards on our energy returns to renewables. Uh, if their returns are less than 10 to 1 or 14 to 1 or whatever they're at, uh, we are going to a far less energy dense um, gathering system. We haven't done that in history. That has not been proven. It has not been tried. We've always gone up. I mean, does this mean that people, that we're going to have to shrink the population? Maybe. I don't know. And how environmental, how the environmentalist, how uh, ethical or moral is it saying that you're going to have to shrink the population by 25%? Is that something that's, that, that you think is, is worth doing? I'm not here to, to make that judge, but I can tell you this, they're not investing in oil. They're not investing in coal. They're not investing in a lot of these things. They are literally pulling money out from it. Now, that's going to make whatever resource there is in this world ultra valuable if they can't transition this over. It's, it's going to be the biggest squeeze of anything that we've seen in, in, in this world by a long shot. Uh, every other bull market we've had basically no restraint on anything to drill uh, on anything we we had copious amounts of energy we had fertile land all around us we had technology growing at rapid paces now what happens when the fertile lands become a lot less fertile when things become a lot more rare when you don't invest when it's not open when you shut down borders when you shut down things and say this isn't open to drill in. I'm sorry. And, and let's say their plan, whoever's plan, to transition into renewables 
uh, because of we'll call it climate change. All we're doing is we're, we're transitioning climate change into environmental disaster. If, if you were to look at this from an objective standpoint, uh, and perhaps the climate change is a lesser evil than the environmental disaster that we're going to create. I don't know. I don't have the answer, but what they're doing is they're literally, they're basically putting up a blockade. They're, they're putting up a barrier to entry around all of these fossil fuels. They are higher energy dense uh, sources of fuel. They have no way of, of, of s storing electricity energy at the moment. I don't know if they're going to have that in the next five years or not in copious amounts. They're going to they're gonna literally block all the, the environmentalists, the same ones that want to swap, swap to renewables, they're going to block the mining companies. The very feedstock that goes into all these renewables and solar. Trust me, it's going to get harder and harder to get these minerals out of the ground. So the, the way that I've always viewed this and the way that I look at it is anybody who has existing infrastructure in place that can get oil, natural gas, coal out of the ground, and I've included coal into this, is going to be infinitely valuable because they're literally putting a barrier around new, ent new entrance into, that, into those sectors in terms of not loaning money to them. Now, they're, they're going to loan money to the renewable sector, but the problem is commodities, the things that, that go in to build these things, these complex systems now, uh, are very mineral dense. And when minerals go up and commodities go up um, and the price of oil and natural gas go to the moon, the minerals won't be there. So you're kind of in this catch-22. The very thing that's, that's feeding the renewables and making them cheap is the very thing that is keeping them cheap. <laughs> it's it's uh, oil is the number one commodity. Silver is the number two commodity. Now, if you were to look at this from an investment standpoint, and you were to say, you know, how could I play this? How could I play uh, the barrier to entry? Uh, as energy becomes more expensive, and energy and as energy becomes more scarce because they're literally blocking new entrants into it, you can look for one those that are very pro oil. And invest in those countries because that's really the only spot that you can invest for growing those fossil fuels. So you could look at that. Or you could buy physical metals because if they're going to block basically your energy source to put, um, to put pressure upward on energy prices, and we're kind of looking at this from a 5, 10, 20 year, doesn't matter however long, uh, for, for a while. If they're blocking all the entrances, new entrances in, that means oil is going to get more expensive and natural gas and coal and all these other. Uh, energy sources. If renewables get more expensive, then you're not. You're just going to have more expensive energy. More expensive energy in copious amounts is going to put all of the cost curves. They're going to push. They're going to pull them all higher. And if we see more and more people starting to block out the the metal mining companies, the, the miners, if they're saying you're not going to mine in our backyard, we're going to nationalize this. And and let's say there's a huge shortage in the metals, uh, a, a very large shortage. So the price goes astronomically high. Well, then that's a perfect setup for buying physical metals. So when, when I'm looking at all this stuff and I'm looking at investments, uh, I'm looking at how, how can I store my value and how can I grow my purchasing power? I'm doing both. And if everyone's going to be blocking all these things, if, if they're going to be blocking um, oil companies from drilling if, in, in certain regions and areas, and, it's, and, and they're going to cut their, their uh, we'll call it their loans to them, so they have less and less loans going to them, which is going to contract the oil uh, coming out of the ground. Our, our production is going to decline at some point. Uh, and, and they think that's perfectly good. It's good for the climate, right? It's good for the climate if, if people starve in certain countries, right? That, that's perfect. Um, we, we look at the environment. Uh, we're going to try to destroy the environment, but the environmentalists aren't going to like that. So they're going to stop mining in a whole bunch of different areas. They're definitely not going to process a lot of this stuff, I think. Uh, in certain areas because it's too uh, it creates too much waste and i agree with that I, there's nothing wrong with that um and and you've got uranium there uh uranium is the cleanest source of energy and we can contain all of its waste it's actually the best energy producing source with the least amount of waste that actually hits the environment it's the most environmentally friendly and climate friendly solution why do you think I'm piled into it? It meets everything. 
And people, all they have to do is, is realize this at some point. Once they wake up, all the money's going to flow there because that's, that's really the only great energy solution with higher energy returns to, to sustain an advanced society with, with no emissions, with contained waste, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, with minimal minerals being used and base, uh, base load stable energy source. It's by far superior. We'll figure it out at some point. Uh, and, and, and everyone else will figure that out as well. It, that's my opinion, at least. But physical metals, I think, are also a very good, a very good investment. Um, the reason being is if everyone's blocking this out and everyone's going to restrict uh, investment into energy and restrict lands that are being drilled in energy, then energy prices are going to go far higher. And that's going to be seen in the cost curves. And if we run into a large shortage where everybody wants minerals for their renewable projects, what do you think that's going to do to the price? It's going to go far higher. And, and, and renewables are probably going to price themselves out uh, out of being a, a, a good source of, of power generation, especially on a massive scale. Maybe not on small scales, but massive scale. Uh, so we're coming off a, a very energy surplus world. We've had energy everywhere. Uh, we are cutting that investment to that high energy dense source. And we're trying to transition to something that has a lot less energy returns. We have not done that before in history. It has been untried and we are going to try that. We'll see what happens. Um, the way that I think is the least risk way to play this with money coming into the system is just buy physical metals, buy physical silver, which is the number two commodity in the world. Simple. Uh, buy physical platinum. That uses a copious amount of energy. Uh, the energy that they're that they're using to dig this out is a it's deep in the earth, takes a lot of energy to get out, and then takes a whole bunch of energy to refine it and go through the entire process. It's one of the most energy uh, consuming processes. So platinum, uh, probably palladium as well, are very uh, energy consuming and rhodium. And and if energy prices go skyrocketing and these and these metals are valuable to whatever we're going to transition into, like a hydrogen fuel economy or, or whatnot, um, then I could see tremendous value uh, shifting to those, especially if it's very costly to get it out of the ground. Uh, and, it, and, and it's very difficult to, to know exactly what the cost curves are going to do. Um, you've got technology trying to bring them down. Then you've got your ore grades trying to bring it back up. And then you've got your energy costs and input costs, um, which I think are going to go vertical. Now, uh, there is a scenario where uh, if energy gets scarce enough that the production of energy will actually self-implode. Uh, this is kind of like thinking way off in, 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 the, in the future, where if we get into very scarce energy, then you get scarce steel, uh, scarce minerals. And, and then if your minerals get super scarce, then you can't, you can't keep the, the production of oil going. Uh, you start running into shortages of, of all the parts and all the drilling equipment and all this stuff uh, eventually way down the road. This is like, I'm just talking like future, future. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's like way out there, but uh, shortages could uh, delay oil production worldwide. And, and it could impact it in some way um, if we're on a decline of the actual volume. Because if, if we don't have the energy to build and maintain and then have all these minerals just flowing around the earth so, so effortlessly, um, you could see shortages. And, you know, it's, it's like you're making some complicated cake and you have one, one or two ingredients that you're short and you can't make the cake. And you're just like, man, I, I wish I had these two ingredients, but I don't have them. That happens with anything, anything that you build. Uh, a chip shortage, uh, aluminum having problems, rubber problems. If you if you don't have, if you can't put tires on a car, you're not going to have. You can't sell the car. I mean, it's just you know basic things. We're in this very complex world with no inventories. Um, we we've adopted the model of just in time for everything. Everything just in time, just in time. Well, what happens if your trucks don't come in time? <laughs> you get shortages everywhere, and I think that's kind of what's happening. Almost, uh, we're starting to get shortages of things. But, uh, and maybe the truckers have something to do with it as well. But it's, it's just interesting thinking about all this stuff, guys. I just wanted to kind of touch on that. Um, 
it's almost like they are trying to push this higher for, for energy. Uh, if you stop investing into it, uh, they're putting up a barrier to entry to it. And if their plan A doesn't work with the renewables and it's not cost effective, uh, we're just going to end up with really high cost energy. Uh, I think Germany's proven that quite well. And California, uh, a lot of places, <laughs> they're proven this. And we're going to hit natural gas shortages because we're converting everything to natural gas. And in, in this world, if we just start burning natural gas like heck, uh, I don't know how big our inventories are in relationship to our usage, but that inventory to usage ratio is declining. Uh, so you're carrying less inventory per your usage in terms of percent coverage, if that makes sense. I'll stop it there, guys. Give me, give me a thumb up if you like the content. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thank you for listening. This is Finding Value.